Natasha Schull is a cultural anthropologist and associate professor at MIT and also a documentary filmmaker. Her work explores the relationship between technology design and user experience. Uh, she's considered gambling technology and her current ongoing research concerns the rise of digital self-tracking technologies and the new modes of introspection and self-governance they engender. And that's who I am. I think what people are addicted to when they use their mobile phones for these activities is really killing time. Another thing we're seeing increasingly is applications that track our productivity. Um, one of them is called Rescue Time, for example, and a lot of my professor friends um, use it. I use it myself, and it helps you to manage your time. Um, even manage the time you spend using other mobile applications and then calculates for you at the end of the day um, how much time you're spending doing work versus other things and then you can begin to see where you can intervene and change your habits. So already we're seeing um, on, our, on our phones applications like this. I think that's the application um, that we're going to be um, seeing more and more of in our phones. Uh, and it goes along with this idea that we're killing time. We're spending, uh, it's almost like these mobile apps are absorbing us so much and calling us uh, in these tempting ways to, to kill time playing them. And then we're seeing now um, a, a, next rev a, a next line of applications helping us to get that time back. Um, so mobile applications are creating this problem with time and they're also trying to give us tools for harnessing our time better. I think we are seeing a revolution in healthcare. I think healthcare is going to become much more of an information technology enterprise. Um, right now people are working actively in every domain of healthcare to develop uh, self-tracking apps, for example. Most significant are the apps that are in real time because those are the ones that are constantly running, not things you check in with once, uh, but apps that are asking you to constantly attend to how many glasses of water you're drinking, uh, how many steps you're taking during the day. Having all this data about ourselves so immediately at our fingertips does two things. In one sense, it makes us more empowered. We can become experts on ourselves and feel more in control of our lives and intervene to make our lives better. On the other hand, we're so aware all the time of monitoring ourselves that it can become very uh, obsessive and actually take away from the quality of life. Poker players are constantly monitoring every, uh, every step they take in a game. Uh, and what they want to know is how can they improve their play? How can they uh, play differently in order to win more money? Uh, when you take that over to health domain, um, people are tracking how much, how far did I run today? How could I run further the next day? Maybe if I drink more water and wake up at a different time, I'll see a greater performance um, in my running. So in both domains, you see this kind of competitive spirit where you're almost competing against yourself um, to, to improve your outcomes, whether they're gaming outcomes or health outcomes. Um, I think what we see a lot in mobile technology is um, what people call gamification. So turning everyday life into a game. A lot of these applications are designed as games with little incentives uh, to, to keep you playing at being more healthy, for example. When health becomes a game, I think people are likely to have a different relationship to their illnesses. Maybe they'll feel more empowered uh, that they can kind of compete against themselves to um, do things better and improve their health outcomes. Uh, this, this is the hope of the designers who are um, making these applications. There's nothing about new technologies that makes them more addictive. It's the fact that most new technologies are being manufactured and marketed by business interests who want to make a profit. And making a profit means uh, pulling people in, so they tend to be more addictive. You see on Facebook 
all of these little games and slot machines that you can play. Um, and just a few months ago, uh, the, the government in England uh, approved the monetization of slot machines on Facebook. So you can actually gamble for money um, on these applications. And uh, all of these gaming companies are now pushing for this technology in the United States and in other countries. So increasingly, we're going to basically have casinos at our fingertips so that we can um, gamble directly from our bank accounts and our credit cards um, on these games that we used to have to go to a casino to play. Um, that accessibility and availability of gambling and the way that it's integrated with our financial resources, in my view, is extremely problematic. The French philosopher Gilles Deleuze said types of machines are easily matched with each type of society, not because machines are determining, but because they express those social forms capable of generating them and using them. You can track through history the way that notions of the self have changed. I think what we're seeing today um, is a new notion of the self that I call self as data.